Hi everybody, this will be part two of a solar system animation tutorial series. Last video we talked about how to set up the scene with modeling, scale, and position of our solar system. This video we will talk about how to apply materials uh, and apply those texture maps that we have found from online and put in our project folder. So once again it's important that the texture maps are in the same location as your Maya file so that way everything loads properly from our Maya uh, scene. So for this project we're going to use the Hypershade Material Editor again and we're going to create new materials for every new texture that we need. We're just going to use basic Blend or Lambert materials for this project. Uh, so we're not going to use a PBR material. Uh, we just need to use just one base color map uh, and we're going to use either Blend or Lambert. We're going to use Blend for the objects that need to have uh, shininess associated with them such like most of the planets and then we're going to use a Lambert material for the stars because we don't want the stars background to be shiny at all. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new blend and we'll call this one M underscore sun for the sun material. There's our graph for it. When we're mapping a just a base color map to a blend I'm going to click the checker box beside color Wait for it. There you go. And then from the create render node, the same node that I showed last video of how to add the noise deformer texture, but this is going to be synced to the color node of this blend material. I'm going to choose from file. And then that will open up my file node in the property editor of the Hypershade. And I'm going to click the folder beside image name. So it's this button right there. And then I'm going to go find my project folder my solar system animation and this is the sun texture and we'll open that up alright so that shows the preview there what I'm gonna do is select the sun and then if I hold down right click on that material I can choose assign material to selection if you don't see the texture in the viewport all you have to do is hit 6 and the textures will show up in the viewport so now you can see that sun texture is properly applied so I'm going to do it again uh, with uh, the next planet. Let's go to blend and we'll call this one M underscore Mercury. We will hit the checker box beside color. From the create render node we're going to choose from file. In the file node we're going to hit the folder and then go find Mercury text. Okay. We will take uh, Mercury and right click and do uh, assign material to selection. There you go. So we're going to uh, keep on. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead uh, so I get all of the other textures other than the ones that we do need to make adjustments for. So I'm going to pause the video and when I come back, the rest of the planet materials will be set up and then I'll talk about the adjustments we might need to make with Earth and Saturn. Okay, I'm back. So I've uh, set up the rest of the planetary textures. Uh, I've done an individual blend material. For each one of my different objects and then like uh, the Sun and Uranus and Venus there's just a color map applied to it the same way I showed with the previous two um, so uh, Venus Earth uh, the moon uh, they all have textures on them there's Mars uh, there's Jupiter okay here's Saturn we'll come back and correct Saturn's rings here in a little bit uh, Neptune, or excuse me, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Okay. I've also added an asteroid material to the asteroid in the same exact way. Then I've created two materials so with just flat colors for my spaceship. Okay. Um, so those two are this M spaceship material and M spaceship material 2. The base green does not have any transparency, it's just a bluish green color. The Spaceship 2, I've dragged the transparency up a lot on this, uh, so that is transparent. And it's also like a lighter blue color. Okay, so a couple things we need to add to this or make sure it's set up correctly uh, that we can add more detail to is, is like an Earth Clouds texture. Now this isn't required, but something you can do. Um, it adds a little bit extra flair to the way the Earth looks. Um, so if I hit control D to duplicate the Earth's geometry, I'm going to retitle this one Earth Clouds 
And what I'm gonna do is take that geometry and scale it up just a little bit. So it's just a little bit larger than Earth itself. So it's a little larger sitting on the outside. All right, so this one, uh, Earth Clouds Object, I'm gonna add a new blend. Um, and uh, let's see, let's go ahead and name it. So M Earth Clouds, okay. And I have this black and white Earth Clouds texture. And I'm going to use this as both the base color and the transparency. So let's go to the color node and do from file and then map that earth clouds texture. And then I'm going to go back to earth clouds and map the same file to the transparency. So let's go to transparency from file and let's go find that same earth clouds texture. In order for this to work properly, I also need to map that to the specular color. So if I click the box beside specular color and click from file, and then map that same file to the specular. So if I right click on this material and choose graph network, that makes it so the graph is visible for just this material. So this same earth clouds texture has to be loaded to the color the specular color and transparency for this to work. And the preview should now show you that it is uh, transparent. So I'm selecting the duplicate earth clouds object that's a little bit larger than the earth shape in general. And I'm gonna apply that to my earth clouds texture. So that's why specifically I chose an image for the earth that did not have clouds on it already. So that way I can add a clouds texture on top of it. So let's um, let's actually select it and frame that up with F. So now hopefully you can see the clouds are on top of the earth and if I rotate the earth clouds geometry it looks like the clouds are moving around on the earth. So it's kind of something extra, a little bit of flair that you can add to the earth cloud material uh, with a secondary object and a secondary material. The other thing we need to add is the texture for Saturn's rings. I have a circular rings image that is black with the background and white dots with the rings. Uh, so what I'll need to do is create a new material. This time I do not, uh, well I can have a blend, it's not, not a problem there. New blend and we'll do M underscore Saturn rings. Okay. So from the Saturn rings material, I'm gonna map that rings texture we will find rings texture. And then I need to go find, let's see, where is Saturn rings? Saturn rings, there we go. I'm gonna map this also to the transparency. So I'm basically gonna do the same thing I did with Earth clouds. Rings texture there. Go back to the Saturn material and also specular color. It's the same thing I did with the clouds. Rings texture there. Okay. If your previews are never showing up in the material itself, all you have to do is right click on that material and choose refresh swatch. And that should update that material as well. So now with Saturn's rings, I can add this material to that uh, object, but there's gonna be one major issue is that my UVs for this disc shape are not set properly so that the rings look like they're on this object properly. Um, I'm gonna hide my stars background for a second so maybe you can see it. Um, so the transparency is working. Uh, you can see the planet through this, but the UVs are not set properly for the disc shape. So let's go to our workspace and change this to UV editing. And there's the reason why my texture, um, let's see, yeah, if I turn my checker box off, but my image texture on, my texture is circular, but my UVs are not. So we can easily fix this by having the object in object mode, the disk Saturn's ring shape, and go to UV and go to the box beside planar. We just need to do a planar projection on this. So if I go to the box beside planar, I'm gonna use the Y axis, which is the vertical axis, and choose project. Okay, that should do a pretty good job. Now I can see my rings on my object. Uh, they're in a circular shape on my object now. What I can do is see if I need to scale anything in. So like in the UV mode, I can drag select 
on all these center UVs and just scale them in some so that the rings aren't going to be cutting off that form. The outer edge is fine, but the inner edge was too, uh, too close to the rings. So if I scale that in, that'll correct that shape there. So I can get out of the UV editing workspace, go back to classic. And now if I deselect that object, now it looks like actual rings around Saturn. So it's an easy way to do rings with a transparency on a texture map. All right, one final thing we need is the texture for the stars. And I found this texture from NASA's um, uh, uh, series of texture maps for the solar system. So it's pretty high depth, high quality image. Um, the thing is an 8,000 by 4,000 uh, texture image or pixel image. Um, so if you search for NASA solar system textures, you should be able to find a, uh, a lot of variety for them from their website. Uh, with my stars object being really large, I need a really large image. So at least a 4K or an 8K image would work for this. So the last thing we want to do is go add one more material. This time we're going to use a Lambert material because I don't want my stars uh, object in the background to be shiny. So this is a Lambert material and I'm going to title this one M stars. And so there's no specularity to this or shininess. I'm going to hit the box beside, checker box beside color, go to file, and hit the folder beside name in my file node, and go find that star's texture. Okay, let's uh, preview that again. So right click and choose refresh swatch on that material. There you go. Now let's add that to our star's background. All right, so now if we look around, we have a pretty good quality image. It has a Milky Way in the back of it. Um, a pretty good quality image for our background. Um, so that's how we can set up textures for our solar system animation. The next video we'll start talking about how to animate our solar system.